Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So finally have an update for you on our snowbird trip. It's been a long time since I put out a, a video update. I've been publishing photos and some video shorts, but I uh, haven't had a video update in a long time, mostly because we've sort of stayed in the same area this year. Um, you know, we had the big wedding in Vegas and kind of blew a lot of our, our snowbird trip budget there with hotels and RV parks and buying rings and all that sort of thing. So we decided this year to kind of like stay more in one spot, not move around too much, save on the, the fuel and that sort of thing. So we were down near Ajo, Arizona, a little town. We just love the desert down there, super lush. Lots of cactus and uh, wildlife and good photography for Anne. Lots of nice hiking down there. And it's just kind of a mellow town. We kind of like it kind of off the beaten path. So we did leave um, there for a couple weeks. We went over near Yuma, a little bit past Yuma, to Ogilvy Road BLM and camped there. A um, couple reasons to go there. One is I was going to do some skirting videos for a company called Easy Snap. Uh, skirting also do their sunshades so when i stayed in uh bc one winter i i bought their skirting and used that for that uh, it was the year during covid when we couldn't cross the border and it worked out really well so they asked me if i could do some more shorter clips for them so they could use them on their website and stuff like that so i wanted a nice kind of clean flat area to do that so we went over there I knew Ogilvy was kind of a quiet area and I could kind of take my time and do the skirting videos. And also it was fairly flat. There's a lot of, you know, where you're kind of off angles and kind of lumpy areas. So it made a good spot to do that. Also, there were some friends of ours that were over in Yuma. So they came out to visit and we camped with some other friends. So it was kind of more of a, a social time. And I also went, one day I drove up to Quartzsite just to take a look at a, a new product from a company that's a solar awning and I did a video review of that for them um, so you can look at that if you want there was some drawbacks to it <clears throat> pretty cool product it's not really out to market yet as far as I can tell <clears throat> excuse me a little dry here in the desert uh, then we decided Anne really wanted to go back to Ajo she just loved it there so I'm, I was like cool we'll just go down there and hang out for you know maybe six weeks or so weather's pretty good down there and uh, so we went back there and went back to boondocking on some public land. And uh, then we went to an RV park for one week down there. I think it was $150 for the week. Uh, I think it's uh, something trails RV park. I'll put up, I'll put up some text. But anyway, it was $150 for a week. And uh, the weather wasn't going to be good for a week. So it was good to be in an RV park on hookup. So I was able to flush my tanks. And I really badly needed to... Uh, fix my valves my waste valves were all jammed up every year or two years you know I have to kind of take them apart and clean them out because especially boondocking you don't get as much of a flow sometimes with the macerator pumps so I tend to get you know toilet paper or something jammed in there every once in a while and it builds up to the point that the valves won't close properly then they're kind of seeping past and it kind of becomes kind of a hassle for me but I got all that done and the valves have been working great ever since and then we headed back out to uh, Boondock for, I think we're about another month <laughs> out there. Um, we found a few of cool, couple cool spots. I'm actually not even going to divulge them. There's one of those, some spots I keep to myself because if I, if I say to the crowd, all of a sudden it'll be the next year, everybody will be there. So uh, um, just, so it's near Ajo. There's a lot of good spots down there around Ajo. But anyway, we stayed down there, but uh, now it's, Lay into March, almost mid-March now. It's going to start warming up down there. And once it gets up to around 80, 85, 90, it's not really that fun to be uh, dry camping because it's it just gets too hot. And also some of the critters start to get going, you know, lizards and snakes and things and, and scorpions start to appear. Although the flowers are really cool, so we kind of miss out on that. But I just don't like boondocking in really hot weather myself. So uh, we decided this year to move up uh, back into Nevada. Really like Nevada, Southern Nevada. So um, took a couple hops to get up here. Um, first hop, we drove from Ajo to a place called Snaggletooth BLM, which is just about 20 miles south of uh, Needles, California, off of Highway 95. And it's just an easy off, off the road, you know, 
couple hundred yards or you can go deeper in, but uh, nice, really cool rock formations there. And it was a nice spot. A little bit of highway noise during the day, but it kind of quieted down at night because it's mostly a trucking route. Not, not too much traffic goes through there. Um, stayed a couple days, but then windy weather was on the forecast. It's going to blow pretty good the next few days. So we, we moved up a bit further and uh, so I had some issues with the truck. I was taking a route over to, I was going to go over to Kingman and up 93 across Hoover Dam um, and end up over near Overton, Nevada to a spot we like, Poverty Flats or Snowbird Mesa, both same name, near Valley of Fire um, to kind of wait out the, the weather before we go to our, our next spot that we want to spend a few weeks at. And we were going along in the truck. The temperature was fluctuating quite a bit out of normal. Usually when I'm just going along the interstate doing, you know, 60 miles an hour with not much wind or anything, temps, my coolant temp is around 193 to 195, kind of 192. And it kept going like from 200 to 208. And then back down again, and it kept fluctuating. That's kind of worried about that because it's out of the norm and uh, so I pulled over at a rest stop and kind of ran it and it seemed to be okay and at the rest stop I checked my oil and coolant and everything looked fine but I did crawl under the uh, the front of the the motor engine there and I did see some oil down there which is it's never leaked oil it's now over five years old and it's just been tight as a drum but uh I did notice it's weeping some oil, but that didn't really have anything to do with the overheating problem. So I continued on. We went, got down near King Kingman, and it was still acting weird. And then I came through King King Kingman, Arizona. So I decided we were gonna rather than go all the way down to Hoover Dam, which is kind of a kind of a desolate highway. I decided to take the route and go down to. Uh, Bullhead City because it was all downhill so if I was having overheating problems it wouldn't be a problem and if at the bottom of the hill things were bad then I would uh, I would uh, stop there and you know take it to a shop but uh, all of a sudden I was I was coming on the straight stretch out of Kingman down to Bullhead City and all of a sudden temperatures went completely normal again and everything was fine so when I got down to uh, Bullhead City, I decided, well, let's do a test here. I'm going to climb out of uh, Bullhead City or Laughlin Bullhead City area and go up to uh, Highway 95. Um, and it's quite a big grade to pull. So it usually it usually needs a lot of cooling. So if there was going to be a cooling fault, it would show. So I went up there and everything was fine. Even when I was I was pulling pretty heavy steep grade, and even the big fan came on and, it, you know, it would heat up to maybe 208 and then the fan came down, put it down to 195 and it, I went all the way up that steep grade and, and the temperature never budged off 195. So I'm like, oh, everything's fine. And so we decided to just stop at a, a rest stop called, uh, it's near the, the weird named town of Cal Nev Ari. It's like stands for California, Nevada, Arizona. It's kind of a, a, str a strange little little tiny town along Highway 95, but there's a really nice rest stop there that we stopped at a few times. So we stopped at that rest stop and uh, hung out there. And then I remembered in the back of my brain, uh, a couple years ago, I was coming out of Red Rock Canyon uh, National Conservation Area in Nevada, and the same thing had happened. The, the temperatures were kind of going wacky. And what it was is the, oops, sorry, my camera decided to shut down on me. Anyway, what it was is it was doing a regeneration of the admission systems, the DEF and all that kind of stuff was going through its regen cycle, active regen, they, saw, they call it. So that kind of affects the, the coolant temperature. And that's why it was doing it and just slowly going up and down as the computer was controlling it, I imagined. And then all of a sudden, bang, it finished and everything was okay. But I still do have some kind of weird weeping oil leak. Um, seems right at the front of the engine and I'm, I'm kind of like worried it's gonna be the timing chain cover or one of the 
the gaskets or seals on the main crank or something so it could be a kind of an expensive repair from what I've looked at but it's just barely doing it right now so I'm hoping that uh, we can get back home and I can get it fixed while we're out boating so I'm not without the truck but I'm gonna have to monitor that anyway we stayed at that rest stop uh, because by that time we had burned off enough hours that Anne was getting tired so we just overnighted at that rest stop Next day got up and uh, moved up to where we are near Overton now. We're going to boondock here. There's a big uh, windstorm coming in late today and then tomorrow it's going to be quite windy. And then a little bit on Wednesday there's going to be a little bit of a uh, Wednesday or Thursday there's going to be even maybe some rain as the cold front goes through. Then a little bit of wind so we'll probably stay here till Sunday. Then we're going to move along the road a bit and uh, that'll be the, the next uh, step in our uh, adventure. Um, we're going to stay around southern Nevada till probably near the end of March. And then plans are this year we want to go back up the Oregon coast. So we'll we'll head back towards California across the coast mountains and uh, and go up and spend some time on the Oregon coast this year. Because the last two times we've gone up through Utah and Idaho and that. But kind of miss the Oregon coast. It's one of our, our favorite spots. So we'll go back there and that'll get us uh, all enticed to be eager to get back on the boat this summer for a ocean ocean adventures. Anyway, till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. I'm gonna have some of uh, a couple of videos here, little clips from a couple of those spots, uh, the Snaggletooth and the rest stop, and then I'll give you a slideshow of some of the photos we've taken in the, the last little while. Cheers, guys. So nice little stopover place, Snaggletooth. Primitive camp, BLM spot, free camping, just off the highway. I think this is 95, about maybe 20 miles from Needles, California. Right off the road, as you can hear the traffic going by. Nice and flat spots, easy access in and out. Oh, here comes a hang gliding dude. Powered hang glider, it looks like. know what you're gonna see in the desert anyway just give you a look around here it's March early March I think it's like the 9th or the 10th we're just gonna spend a couple nights here just moved up from spending I don't know almost two months down in Ajo area just loved it down there, but uh, it's starting to warm up now, so we're starting to head north, move up in elevation. I think we're going to go to Nevada next. Anyway, took a stroll down there yesterday, and the road goes quite deep. You can see other RVs down there, campers. You can go down quite deep, especially if you have a smaller vehicle. There's a lot of flat spots, but eventually it does get a little rough. So oh, quick overnight spot. This is a rest stop. A few miles from the California border in Nevada off Highway 95, not far from Las Vegas. Really clean rest stop. You can see here's where the trucks usually park on the pavement here. But they have this big gravel parking lot. It's actually fairly flat. Came in here yesterday. There was just two RVs and then another couple came in for the overnight, a few trucks. But not bad spot to spend the night. Really easy in and out from Highway 95, headed that way. 
probably about 15 miles that way. It's searchlight. You go up onto the, into those mountains there, come down the other side, down into another big basin, and then up towards uh, Boulder and Las Vegas. Anyway, just getting ready to leave. Going to head up and spend some time around Overton, Nevada, and then we're hoping to get up and uh, revisit the Virgin River Gorge Campground. It's open again. It's a BLM campground. They charge, I think, eight bucks a night. Very pretty. It's got some picnic tables and stuff. One of the few sites, BLM sites, you actually pay for, but I think it's well worth it. Really pretty area. Hopefully the Joshua trees will be flowering this time of year. Stay tuned. Just out for a little hike today. A lot of wind and uh, rain overnight. But today it's clearing up as the cold front moves on. See some puffy clouds in the sky as the moisture evaporates. Beautiful day for a hike. Kind of in the high 50s Fahrenheit. See where we're camped over there. Not too many other campers around right now. Lots of fields of choya cactus down there. Just gorgeous, all these backlit choyas and ocotillos. They're all super green right now. Everything's greening up with all the rain we've had. To be really careful hiking around here though. Lots of those little uh, spiky balls from the teddy bear choyas everywhere. <laughs> 